Hello everyone. Welcome to the UberCloud Experiment webinar. Today I have uh, three wonderful speakers with me. My name is Burak Yenier and you will also hear from Sam, Wim and Wolfgang today. I will introduce them in just a second. But let me get the webinar rolling here. In today's world, um, in computer-aided engineering, engineers have three options to use technical compute power. The most common is the workstation that they would have under their desk or on their, um, on their desktops. Um, the next option, from, starting from the workstations, is the um, workstation server that they can have for their, um, uh, for their office. And nowadays, the computer-aided engineering cloud is coming um, as the next trend. And we will talk a little bit more about the experiences of one of HPC experiment teams regarding that. When we look at the computing tools that the engineers use, we see that each of them come with different challenges. Workstations, obviously, are relatively slow and they are limited by the capacity that their CPUs and memories offer. The servers, on the other hand, um, have more capacity, but they are quite expensive and they can be complex to manage. Running a service in the cloud is more of a recent phenomenon and it comes with its own challenges, security, licensing of software tools, data transfer, and the expertise of the group in running applications in the cloud are all challenges that we frequently run into. UberCloud Experiment was started about two years ago to explore these um, technology clouds, technical clouds, and find out the challenges and the potential solutions. What we're trying to do is to demonstrate the potential of technical computing in the cloud together with over 1,200 participants. These participants have um, 55 cloud providers. Among us are over 80 software providers and hundreds of experts who have experience in high performance computing, technical computing, and uh, various cloud related uh, expertise. We have run five rounds of the experiment in the last two years and uh, we are approaching the 150 teams mark. Each team contains an end user and you will hear from one of them today. And um, we also include software, hardware, and expertise providers into each team. In about two weeks, we are going to launch our second compendium and it will be full of use cases, I believe about uh, 20 of them. And um, you will be able to read more about the experiences of each of these teams. At the end of this webinar, we are going to send you an email and we will ask for your uh, project ideas so you can join one of our future rounds. On today's talk, we are going to look at Team 8, which um, was, was running an experiment um, in one of the earlier days of HPC experiment project. And um, the, the team is made up of FL Smith uh, with, within the cement and mineral industry. We will talk further about the project and the different team members who participated in this project. On today's webinar, Together with me are Sam, Wim, and Wolfgang. Sam's background is in computer, um, uh, computational fluid dynamics. He is the fluid dynamics specialist at FL Smith, and he has about 15 years of experience in this field. Uh, Sam is quite unique. He also has experience in computation clusters and HPC systems. Wim is the lead product manager at ANSYS. He has 20 years of experience in, in this field, and he's currently in charge of corporate marketing programs for HPC and cloud. Wolfgang is the president of UberCloud, and he's one of the co two co-founders. And he will be talking further about uh, Bull Serviware, which was the resource provider in this project, as well as science and computing 
which provided the expertise. Without further ado, I will turn it over to Sam. Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Um, it's good for me to share my uh, experiences with the uh, Uber Cloud. Um, we started, yeah, it's got to be a year and a half ago now. Um, and uh, I would just like to point out that some of the things, as you probably know, HPC services, cloud services, they, they change very rapidly at the moment. Um, so any information that is uh, that was current a year and a half ago maybe isn't current now. And I'd also like to uh, just thank our um, the group there with um, Ansys and Bull and uh, Science Computing um, for all the help and assistance that we got through the whole of the project. Um, the first slide that you see is a kind of a corporate slide. Basically explains the, the company that I work for. Um, cement and minerals are our trade. We're a pretty old company. Uh, we have headquarters based in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, um, 132 years. We've been at least involved in the cement side of things. The mineral side of things is a, it's a bit of a newer aspect, but still we have a lot of experience in it. Um, we have a reputation with our client base for being innovative and, and, and quality driven. Um, and basically we 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 hope to um, source and provide equipment and process sheets for for um, the minerals and cement industry. But basically, we're focusing on on these um, four or five that you can see in the bottom of the slide. There, that's coal, iron ore, fertilizers, copper, gold, and and the cement, which is our big industry. Um, Copenhagen here in Denmark, we we focus primarily on cement, and in the U.S. and India, we have our other uh, minerals. Uh, focus areas, but the group that I sit in, uh, which is called the Mechanical Fluid Analysis Group, we, we tend to spread ourselves all over. We are a global service unit and uh, we use various technical, uh, sorry, numerical tools and CAA, CAE tools to, um, to help um, develop these newer products, optimize and uh, hopefully get a marking leading product out. Um, we use ANSYS, um, both mechanical and, and the fluid dynamic side. But then again, we also use uh, other numerical tools, um, EDUM, Barracuda, and a lot of in-house tools. Um, uh, next slide, please. So uh, this application that we looked at um, is based in the, the minerals application. Um, it's fertilizers. Um, so this, this is quite a big growth industry for us. and. Um, they, we were looking at developing a, a new flash dryer, and this is, will be the largest, or oh, it is actually in operation now, or it's coming into operation soon. Um, it'll be the largest uh, flash dryer that we've ever produced. It's quite a, a large piece of equipment. Um, if you can see um, the, the area where the, the, the two jets at the top, um, that's about a 10 millimeter, uh, sorry, 10 meter di diameter, um, and the height of the whole structure is about 40 meters, so it's a massive piece of equipment. Um, we can't really test it full scale, we can do small bent type scale things, but uh, we would like to be able to test the scalability of, of these, these uh, benchmarking tests in order to, to be sure and confirm with our customers that this is the kind of uh, good equipment that we're producing. Um, the system basically takes um, a slurry um, that has then been uh, filtered to get and produce uh, sorry, to remove most of the water um, and puts it into some hot gases uh, on the left of the plot. There's the combustion chamber that we then quench with cold air um, and then uh, where all the streamlines coming in, the red area on the right there at the top just after the Venturi, then we start adding um, some solids. Um, these solids through heat transfer get heated up and all the, the moisture is driven off and we're hoping to get from 21% to 6% moisture. Um, and we're putting 700 tons per hour of, of solids into this gas. So th it's some massive equipment we're talking about. Um, next slide, please. So uh, when we have these big uh, pieces of equipment, we also know that there is a lot of physics involved, and we try to we try to simplify it as much as we can. 
Um, so for example, in this particular case, we don't include combustion, um, we, but we do include the multiphase part where the, the, the liquid in the solid is being transferred into the gas phase um, because that's the important parameter that, uh, that we're looking for, how, how well can this piece of equipment dry the solid. Um, so there's some challenges computationally uh, due to the fact that there is a lot of um, physics involved. There's the multiphase part, the um, solid uh, gas interaction. Um, we also need to uh, solve for the mass transfer, so from the, the liquid um, water being transferred into vapor. Um, and and so it, it takes a while. Um, I'll, I'll skip to the my second point. Sorry, my third point, where you'll notice that even though uh, the cell um, count on on this particular simulation isn't particularly high. Um, there there are a lot of um, uh, particles being added, so the, the there's high particle loading, which makes makes this uh, particular calculation particularly computationally expensive. Our in-house hardware was basically, um, as Buren uh, quoted in the start, that um, basically most of the work is done on a desktop. Uh, we do have a HPC system in house, but it's actually quite old. It's four or five years old, which means that our newer desktops are actually faster than our HP system. C system. Um, and it was taking around about five days to, to run. Um, and when we want to do an optimization analysis or um, check out different flow conditions, um, it, it, was, it was quite a clumsome bit of work kit to work with. So, um, so we looked into what was around there and um, one of my colleagues actually um, he was the first one to notice this HPC experiment or the cloud, and uh, we got involved in that, uh, and we got in contact with with ANSYS and and with uh, computer science and Bull, and uh, they gave us the opportunity to try out this um, this uh, this calculation on some better hardware. Next slide, please. So. Um, when, when we first kind of interfaced with all the people and we got the licensing sorted out and all those kind of administrative type things, uh, it was um, fairly easy to get the data up onto the, onto the bull equipment. Um, there were some good security uh, type features where you were able, they actually needed our IP address in order to get, um, so that they knew it was us that was logging on. We've had other experiences where it's just been an open connection, so, um, and, and and there's pros and cons for both, I suppose. Um, uh, but but it was easy, and the web, web interface that they that they utilised was very similar to our our CFX. Uh, maybe I should have said earlier that we use CFX from the ANSYS package. Um, it, it's a very similar interface, um, and there there's some special scripting that we we actually run in order to do this kind of stuff. Um, and they were able to easily implement that in their XML um, templates. Uh, the running uh, and the monitoring of the simulation that that was done through a VNC type application, um, so we were able to basically see what we usually see um, on our on our desktop and monitor the residuals. Um, there was talk of maybe using some uh, the log files, downloading log files, but that became quite quite uh, quite time consuming and and, and bandwidth consuming. Um, we we used the same system, this Turbo VNC, which was they claimed supposed to um, support OpenGL, but we still had problems with with visualization in the, especially when we had a lot of particle tracks we needed to to show in, in the results. Um, but basically, we had a super support from them, they uh, from Bull. They were able to within half an hour, um, they were able to give us what we wanted, um, and there was a bit of a problem with the with some of the hardware. Um, but, but that was restored very quickly and, and we were able to run again. And we were able to get what we had expected. Um, we wanted to reduce from five days to one to two days, which we were able to do, which was really good. Um, but of course, uh, even though maybe your, your file that you upload is maybe yeah, 50 or 100 megabytes, the amount of data that you, you're generating in these kind of calculations is, is quite a lot. And then you have to be able to move that back into your into the fold, so to speak, um, and that's 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 something that needs to be considered when we're looking at the, this kind of stuff. Um, next slide, please. So, so some of the benefits that we felt we we gained from the Uber Cloud experience. Um, obviously, we don't we have an in-house hardware um, HPC system, um, 
but it's nice that we can just go out and they they have the latest CPUs and they have the latest um, InfiniBand implementation that we don't have in our in-house HPC, um, and and that that current kind of hardware that's all outsourced to some extent. I've written there because we, you do actually have to pay for it at some point. Um, and we can focus more on the results. Uh, we can focus on okay, optimizing the geometry, optimizing the process, as opposed to wondering about, oh, is this IT going to fall over, or speaking to some server guy down in our IT services that that needs to get something back up. That's all handled uh, over there. Um, we had a faster turnaround for our application, which is really what we wanted. Um, there's, there's still a bit of a problem with this remote visualization. Um, we have, as I said, we've got offices in in the U.S. and India. We need to be able to access uh, these these kind of quite complex graphic plots from places where they don't necessarily have um, large um, bandwidths. Uh, so, so that's something that needs to be considered. But it was usable, and we were able to uh, interrogate our results, which was also a benefit. Next slide, please. So, so what have we learned? I think generally it was a, a positive experience. Um, we we uh, we got uh, out what we wanted, which was basically the speed up. It would have nice to have been have a bit of extra time to to run uh, a couple of extra cases, um, but there was licensing issues and, and lots of things. As I remember it now, as I said, it's a year and a half ago. Uh, as I pointed out earlier, there are still some concerns about remote visualization, how we can best optimize that so we don't have to move these massive amounts of data. But I think that's what every, from what I understand, that's what everybody is, uh, is that's a big kind of uh, focus of effort these days. Um, and again, the data transfer at the project end, um, the, the, we need to bring our proprietary data back into the fold, um, into our into our network so that um, so that we're able to analyze it a little further or store it for whenever we need to to bring it back up or modify the design again. There's a couple of things that uh, that we have still need to be done. Um, the financial analysis, how much does, does uh, the cloud solution, how much does it cost compared to a local solution? That's something that we haven't really looked into. Um, but it's definitely something that we're we're considering to uh, to implement in our everyday um, HPC use at some point, depending on when we get prices and how how it can be best integrated into our other systems. And then there's the licensing. At the time, there was only one kind of licensing for HPC, but maybe we will uh, expand a bit further on on how the licensing has changed for 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 Ansys with respect to uh, cloud computing. And uh, generally, it was a it was a great experience, and um, all our expectations were met. So um, I think that we we really we really felt that it was something that was a, a worthwhile undertaking. Um, yeah, but that's all I've got really to say. I would like to pass you on now to to Wim, um, and he can continue on from there. Yeah, thank you, um, Sam, for your. Uh... Uh, excellent talk. So let me let me also thank the organizers yeah, of the UberCloud HPC experiment for uh, participating in the experiment, as well as now for giving me the opportunity to give our perspective yeah, on on their UberCloud experiment. So again, thanks to Wolfgang and Burak, as well as also um, Sam and Bull from, from uh, Science Computing. Uh, to be part of this uh, this particular team project. So, but but um, the organizers asked me to give our perspective on the Uber Cloud experiment. So that's what I'm showing on this particular slide in the first bullet um, item. So um, let me first say that uh, our focus on cloud is uh, in essence not really new. Uh, we've been focusing on a yeah, you could say a constantly changing computing landscape uh, for simulation applications for, for many, many years, if not decades, um, in, in regard to the yeah, software architecture as well as solver scaling, the user environment, which is changing constantly, as, as well as in our business also, with the support for local as well as remote hardware. So 
today's cloud, our today's cloud story is, is really a continuation of our long-term focus at Ansys. And, and as you can notice from this slide is that the Ansys cloud services offered for the HPC experiment are based on, on, on cloud partner ecosystem that provides a set really of partner enabled solutions, in this case through Bool, with uh, ready to go Ansys software running on as Sam also was alluding to very robust um, HPC systems in this case provided through uh, through Bool. So we are very keen on using um, a multi-fender also and a, as well as an open approach that provides customers like Errol Smith a choice of cloud computing solutions delivered by partners of ours. And I can also clearly say that partners who are really then experts uh, at enterprise level HPC, uh, as well as remote hosting and data security, that's, that's I think, very key. And, and Bull is clearly an, a very important cloud partner in that, uh, in that aspect. So, and next, please, Burak. So if, if we come now to the benefits um, I can mention um, here that we participate in, in the Uber Cloud HPC experiment so that customers like Evel Smith can, can benchmark yeah, these services and can also explore the end-to-end -end process of partner-enabled cloud solutions for their simulation workload, like what Evel Smith did um, on their challenging model. And I'm also pleased to say here that in this way, it has already helped us to build out our cloud partner ecosystem, as I was mentioning earlier, and providing our customers with, yeah, with, with a more flexible, a secure, and, and good access to, um, to and to simulation and, and HPC resources. Next slide. On the flip side, there are clearly also yeah, challenges for cloud-based simulation deployments. Um, having talked with, with many of our manufacturing customers, including Evel Smith, um, I think also security is still uh, the, uh, an, a major barrier uh, moving to the cloud. We hear that customers are still concerned about placing sensitive data, simulation IP on third-party cloud especially as questions of ownership and liability of data uh, pops up. On the other hand, we are fully, uh, uh, that's actually particularly the reason why we work with those cloud partners like Bool, which can, um, can secure that in, in the total way and in a fully way according to the standards out there. Um, so we have full trust, but I, again, we hear these concerns and we like to take those concerns away like also our cloud partners do. I would also assess another challenge um, is, is, is to maintain really end user productivity and more in particular in an environment that provides effective remote access to full simulation process uh, like what um, Sam was alluding to. Um, also the 3D graphics as well as interactive controls needs, needs to work very well. Um, but on top of that also data and HPC job management um, available from yeah, whatever machine or mobile device. That's what we also consider as, as, as a major challenge to make that um, happen through um, yeah, a, uh, cloud uh, resources. Next, please. But yeah, I can also say that luckily the Uber Cloud experiment did, did importantly also resolve yeah, some of those challenges. And um, I've included that here on this slide, um, the most important one, I think, and that is thanks to the Uber Cloud experiment, the cloud partner was usually um, able to quantify end user productivity, at least also through some other experiments. They were able to benchmark Ansys application performance and, and make comparison against what they achieve on-premise with the on-premise hardware. And they were all but a, also able to test yeah, um, services through cloud 
providers like like Bull and uh, and 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 Sam did uh, did a, a very good job in um, showing evidence of of good support uh, through Bull. So my, my overall recommendation is here. And uh, next, please. Is is yeah, please. Uh, seriously consider joining an Uber Cloud HPC experiment uh, with Ansys, for example. Next slide, please. Yeah. F furthermore, I was also asked to uh, by the organizers, at least, to put some typical Ansys Cloud scenarios together, which I did actually on this particular slide. Um, uh, so we, we are basically seeing three primary ENSYS customer cloud scenarios, each with its own business uh, or IT drivers, uh, requiring also specific licensing models. That's what I, I'd like to point out on this particular slide. So the, the first one is, is really tied to the growing need for um, yeah, scaling up HPC resources to support bigger, yeah, so to say, bigger and more demanding engineering simulation workloads. Um, uh, because some customers may clearly lack also internal IT support or expertise. They are interested in HPC outsourcing through some kind of yeah, uh, virtual private cloud solution. And we see that they often want to lower the total cost of ownership as, as I'm showing here on the slide and by minimizing operational and cost uh, capital cost and at the same token they also or often at least want to enable collaboration among ge geographically distributed engineering teams and um, and because of its so-called steady workflow and workload nature I would say here the traditional lease and perpetual licensing model is, is applicable if I come now to the second cloud scenario, that one is really related to the need for more HPC resources in order to deal with urgent, unexpected, I would say, or even unplanned projects. Yeah, we see these projects among our customers uh, popping up um, as, a, as a response to some kind of process equipment shutdown or maybe even product failures or sometimes even warranty issues. And so um, in order to cope with these project peaks, customers consider bursting their ANSYS applications into the cloud. And uh, they continue to use then their internal HPC for, let's say, their steady workflow, but add extra compute capacity through cloud resources yeah, for a short period of time. And this is what we really call hybrid cloud uh, scenario. Yeah, that's, that's at least our definition. And here the, the short-term lease licensing model is applicable and very likely the most cost-attractive option. And now coming to the, to the third scenario is what we call the overdraft cloud scenario. This, this one is really related to, yeah, I would say optimizing asset utilization where, where customers have an intermittent need for HPC resources that that, that exceeds their own assets. And, and we believe that this overdraft cloud scenario is a means to you know, optimize the uh, spend as well as the utilization rates. And for that matter, a pay per use, or some people call it a utility, or and we call it actually a usage-based licensing model, is most suited, yeah, is most uh, suitable. And, and we are currently uh, piloting the usage-based licensing model very selectively with partners, uh, cloud partners, as well as with customers who need it. And if you're interested, don't hesitate to contact me personally. And um, so finally, I should also mention here by showing those scenarios that one scenario doesn't exclude the, exclude the other, so to say. Yeah? We see our customers requesting or even using a combination of cloud licensing models. Customers will want to have a more traditional ownership yeah, of licenses for their steady state requirements simply because it's more cost attractive. But at the same time, they layer in the usage-based licensing for, yeah, for their intermittent um, and needs. So that, that actually concludes my, my, my three slides. Um, I'm happy to answer questions at the end. And, and I hand it over now to, um, to Wolfgang.
Thank you. Thank you, Wim. Um, Wolfgang, would you like to take it from here? Wolfgang, we are having a little difficulty in hearing you. Hello. We can oh, hear yeah. you now. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Wim, for uh, your very nice uh, presentation and especially about uh, the different cloud scenarios and your licensing models. Uh, very nice. Uh, and uh, not many ISVs presented uh, in that kind of clear way. Certainly very helpful, especially also for the um, ISV participants here on this webinar. So uh, I got another set of slides from Bühl and from Science and Computing. So I will quickly run through these. Uh, we have already heard from Sam and from Wim about uh, the contributions from Bühl and from Science and Computing. So I can run quickly over these slides, which I got from Marc Levrier from Bühl and from Ingo Seib from Science and Computing. Okay. So um, as a quick overview, HPC as a service uh, brings scientific applications to the cloud. And uh, in uh, this context, our resource provider, Bull has built up their own HPC as a service cloud with Bull's hardware, with their own web portal, and with their own remote visualization technology, which all have been used during this experiment. And uh, as we have seen, even tested and fine-tuned and improved during several of uh, the experiments. I mean, just give you an, an example. Bill alone participated in seven or eight experiments over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. So also, Bill certainly uh, hosted and operated this environment and uh, did a good support, as we heard from Sam, uh, for example. So Bill's view on the major benefits for participating in this experiment uh, is uh, uh, that this experiment helps creating real-world use cases and gives uh, uh, the uh, Bill activities and the infrastructure and the services a worldwide visibility. Even though the experiment deals with serious HPC cloud challenges, Bull says that it is driven in a very friendly and human way. It is a lot of team effort and we would say it's kind of a crowdsourcing. Everybody is helping everybody else. Next slide, please. So the major challenges which uh, Bull faced was uh, where, so especially the ISV uh, software, uh, ISV is adopting the cloud. Uh, that certainly takes some time to move, not, not really to move, but to add to the existing classical annual perpetual licensing models, now the more on-demand models. Some ISVs are very fast and uh, are on top, like we have seen with ANSYS. Others uh, can be, uh, or yeah, have to be even quite slow because of internal regulations, compliances, and other issues. Uh, also, the HPC customers' purchasing habits are not at all cloud ready. I mean, many are still used to buy their equipment, uh, which is a CAPEX, capital expenditure thing and uh, takes you know, big procurement activities, uh, while on the other hand, in the cloud, we have this pay-as-you-go, pay-per-use, on-demand, uh, uh, even kind of purchasing, purchasing cycles instead of hardware. And uh, solving these challenges 
uh, so uh, the HPC marketplaces demonstration uh, place are yeah are them sorry are demonstrating this is all possible. Uh, so um, Bill here suggests that um, ideally, I mean, if we would start with open source applications. Uh, instead of commercial ones. Uh, it uh, can, for example, licensing can be overcome easily because there is none. Uh, and uh, in fact, we have quite a few open source codes in these experiments uh, as well. And uh, certainly it is easier than, it saves a couple of weeks time usually for uh, any experiment. Okay, this may help ISVs to take the step and customers will then adopt and adopt easier. Mark is guessing. So Mark's recommendation is uh, uh, to the end users just try it, uh, which is a very nice one. Okay, uh, Borak, next slide please. Yeah, so this is finally the team expert, uh, especially in the early days of the experiment, we added one, two, three team experts depending on the requirements of the end user and the end user's application. More and more we see now that uh, especially the resource providers and the ISVs uh, be are becoming real experts in this HPC as a service or CAE as a service as you want to call it, um, um, uh, activities. So uh, more and more uh, we didn't need to include a team expert lately. But here we have, and uh, this was Ingo Seib and his team from Science and Computing. Uh, Science and Computing is a provider of services and solutions for customers in technical and HPC environments, from system management to application support. Uh, and they support customers running the application either in their private or on some external computing environment like supercomputer centers, for example, or HPC clouds, integrating them into the customer's workflow. And also, uh, as science and computing is an expert in adopting new technologies for the benefit of their customers. So the view of science and computing on the Uber cloud benefits uh, we're gathering experience from real life customer problems and uh, also showcasing examples for potential new customers. So especially with the support of these case studies, which every team uh, is writing uh, at the end of their experiment and which we are publishing then either, I mean, in magazines, but especially also in our compendiums. So com last co compendium, uh, was last year June and this year's compendium is uh, uh, yeah, coming out in about two weeks. So next slide please. Uh, so the major challenges with HPC in the cloud as seen by Ingo are the process of set setting up a customer's application in an HPC cloud is still quite individual. I mean, this is certainly depending on the application, also on the requirements, even on internal requirements uh, from the end user, but also on the architecture of the system, on the access to the cloud system, uh, and on the support uh, from the uh, resource provider. So there are a lot of factors which, uh, um, basically have to be taken into account. Uh, the solution we offer here is uh, our collaboration platform Basecamp, where we have basically set up 22 steps going through all the different um, you know, uh, yeah, steps, step by step, so to speak. And uh, okay, another challenge is data transfer. Uh, we have heard this already from Sam, and while Sam was talking about a few hundred of gigabyte, we have experiments which have produced uh, tens of uh, of of um, sorry of mega yeah, of gigabytes, and uh, even some some of our teams then decided to send the resulting data uh, back to the end user through overnight Fed FedEx, for example, so which 
by the way, is a very secure way and uh, reliable because in the morning when the end user comes to work, then the uh, data is already on his or her desk. Uh, so locality uh, is also important for some of the end users uh, because they say, okay, I'm in country X and also my resource provider should be in country X uh, for uh, a couple of very good reasons. Uh, then the market development, I mean, you know, the evolution of the current market uh, over time will certainly address these challenges. Uh, we see more and more integrated HP as a, HPC as a service, software as a service, and paper use application licensing, all bundled and packaged in one solution and available at the fingertip of the end users coming now uh, into uh, the HPC cloud market, which makes uh, HPC cloud usage a lot easier. And also we at the UberCloud here, we are developing some kind of technology which will make you know, uh, the uh, uh, moving the application to the cloud and basically also between clouds uh, in the near future much easier. So uh, the recommendation which Ingo has here for you is test the HPC cloud offerings and see how additional computing capabilities improve uh, products, return results earlier without the necessity for investment in new in-house HPC equipment. Okay, next slide please. So that was science and computing and now we are ready for your project, so we encourage you to submit your project. Uh, round five is almost done uh, in a few weeks. Uh, we start with round six then in June and uh, we will use our new technology then uh, which makes all of the new experiments much easier to perform than the 150 previous experiments. So we will announce this in June and uh, the, all the new experiments will test these technologies which simplify, uh, sometimes we believe dramatically, the use and access, access and use of cloud resources.